So today we've got a real corker of a repair. This is one of our own sets which must have come in a box of junk. It's a Fidelity CBF CB1000. Uh, allegedly the worst radio ever made. But of course there are other sets that use the same chassis. Um, knobs are missing. There's a label on the top. It says transmits speaker disconnected and no speaker output anyway and at the back where there should be a power lead there's a bit of wire the lids are already off it and as you can see there's uh, whatever so we better start by doing some basic repairs on this what I'm hoping to do, and the reason I've done this, is I may well have set up the sweep generator correctly on the other bench. And to, to make sure I've set up the sweep generator correctly, which you need to set up the IF on the Great Series, G-R-E-A-T, from Taiwan. Not exactly great sets, but they, mind you, they're reliable, aren't they? And I mean, the trouble was they were bleed-over boxes. But um, in these days, where there's less users on, um, it's, it may well be okay. So I will do some preliminary repairs and we'll switch the recorder back on. Right, we've done a few preliminary things with this radio. I found a scrap chassis here, which is probably in better condition. Uh, we buy in scrap chassis and it can be very useful for some of the hard to get parts. So what we've done is to take the switch off the scrap chassis, which is for the high low power there, and full length power lead with its fuse holder and grommet, so that's gone in. At the same time I noticed the protection diode on this chassis was missing. I'll just zoom in so you see where that is. And it's just down there, if you can see under the red wire, we've got the protection diode. So I've replaced that. No, it's not bodged on the wrong side like you sometimes see them. It's a 1N4001 for those people who want to put a uh, generic equivalent in. And then the other thing to show you before I power this up is I've noticed, although it said on the lid, if you remember it said transmits okay, well I'm not too sure because when you look at that resistor down there, which I will just point to, that to me looks a bit worn out when you compare it to the one on the scrap chassis which is there. So what we'll do is we'll replace that with a brand new one from stock. Uh, if you wonder what the rattle is in the background, I've got uh, one of my colleagues who helps here and uh, he's working on a guitar amplifier. So there you go. Okay, so now we're back. We've changed the resistor for a new one, which is the one down there, which is part of the transmitter common fault on these is if you've had a highest WR the resistor can go high in value in fact the one that came out was still working we did just test it, it was doing 14 and a half ohms uh, I think there's something like 0 0.3 without looking at the manual and um, so this radio would have worked with that faulty part in but it have done about half a watt and you're hard pushed to get more than two and a half three watts out of these anyway on uh, of RF so we'll now switch it on and oh it's on channel 20 that's handy I've got a mic plugged into it I've got the external speaker plugged into the test equipment I've got no switch on thump so there's no audio so just going to transmit and just see what we've got it's doing uh, 2 watts straight away and it's near enough on frequency I'm going to go through the um, synthesizer setup with you because it's a, quite a complicated one on these and it's under the screen plate there, there's quite a few adjustments. It's, so we've got transmit and uh, I'll just see we've got a bit of audio. I can't see any audio uh, and we've got no receive. Um, it's possible the audio preamp runs through the audio chip and I would suspect if we want power to that which I will now just check. It's a TA7205 on this radio. So I'll put the meter there. You can just 
just zoom out to fractions so you can see that better. So this um, is a negative chassis on this, it's not floating. So pin 1 is that end of the audio IC and we've got full rail voltage as you can see. So with no switch on thumb I suspect it's probably been reverse polarity. Bear in mind this radio has had no reverse polarity protection diode until I just fitted it. So we don't know where it's come. Obviously I bought it as scrap and uh, we'll take it from there. So I'm going to change the audio I see and we'll take it, I'll come back to you after that. Right, well I've now changed the audio I see for a new one. As I say it was a Toshiba TA7205 and of course that lives just there. And we checked the voltage and there was no speaker pop, no nothing. So chances are that what's happened is that's uh, um, a burnt out device. Uh, and I think what's happened is the radio has been reverse polarity for that to happen. I say there was no diode, no fuse, so that's typical. So we'll switch it on. Hey! And as you can hear, we've got receive in the test equipment monitor speaker. In fact, it's working very well. But that isn't the object of the exercise. So we know it transmits, we know it receives, but what I want to do is to set up the synthesizer with you. Right, so having taken the screening can cover off the VCO synthesizer section, the, what the service manual says is set the channel to channel 20, which of course you've seen us do. In fact, we'll switch the radio on at this point. Um, set the CB in to transmit, and it says connecting the oscilloscope to pin 8 of IC201. We're going to use the voltmeter rather than the oscilloscope, and uh, we're going to just CT201. No, we're not. We're going to adjust L201 for logic high. So we're on pin 8, and pin 8 is next to the end one there. So we're on this row, there's the crystal, that's pin 1. And pin 8, because it's 9 pins there, 9 pins there, it's an 18 pin device. So pin 8 is that one there. And I'm going to go to transmit, as it says. Disconnect the speaker because I'm getting interference on myself. Pin eight, and we've got four. Actually, it's all over the place. We may end up having to do it the oscilloscope way. We'll see. And just that VCO for a solid logic high. No, I'm not getting the kind of meter reading that I want. So we'll go for a different type of uh, idea. So what we're going to do now is use a logic probe. So I've connected this up to power. We've set the radio into transmit. And we'll now connect this to pin 8. And we're looking for logic high, as, you, as we've said. So by adjusting... CT201. At the moment, I've got high and low showing. And there we have high. So that's set logic high using the uh, logic probe. So I've not used one of those before um, on a CV. So we know now the set the transmit VCO is set up. So the next thing we have to do, it says, let's have a look at what the manual says. We then adjust CT202, which is the trimmer capacitor, for logic high on receive. So 
I've just checked CT202, which one we're talking about. That's CT201, so that must be CT202. It is indeed. Couldn't get a couldn't get a very positive lot using diode probe for uh, receive. So what I've done, I've reverted to the meter, and we've set it for logic high doing that. I don't know why that was because it certainly set up a treat using the di the uh, logic probe for transmit, but not so for receive. Nevertheless, it is locked, and um, I'm quite happy with that result. So right, well here we are on test bench three. We were covering this Fidelity CB1000 on test bench 2 and I've just showed you how to set up the VCO using a logic probe and a meter. But the um, test shown in the service manual is to do it with an oscilloscope. So if we just zoom on the oscilloscope, we have got a uh, diagnostic oscilloscope on this uh, test bench. So um, as we can see we've got a, a signal there and that is the receive VCO from pin 8 of the synthesizer I see. Having to do this with a camcorder. So what we've done is we've got the oscilloscope probe onto the test point. Ah oh, yes. There's a test point next to pin 8. Now then. It, so C T uh, it was two o coil 201 which is that one, the second one in. So if we go back to the screen, if I make that go out of lock, and there we've lost it off the screen, back in lock, that's the oscilloscope method. You can just hear quietly in the background the signal generator, uh, which is in on this test bench, it's a Farnell. Um, unit. The transmitter test set on this bench is a uh, what is it? A quartz lock uh, 282. Now what this does its own internal signal drainage doesn't go under 80 megahertz um, so that's why we use the external signal generator into this. So we use the uh, quartz lock test set for all the transmitter measurements and uh, that's coupled up to the Farnell signal generator and we've got the oscilloscope and above that we've got a spectrum analyzer so that's what we do on test bench 3 now on transmit it was CT201 CT201 is the one to the left of the probe so if we just show you that just there so if we went into transmit which I will do I'll show you the oscilloscope screen it's in lock if I press transmit and of course it's in lock on transmit and there we have it in lock so that's the oscilloscope method so We'll see you on the transmitter side of the Fidelity CB1000.